are now going to look at the analysis and interpretation of non-financial information. So guys, in addition to financial performance, stakeholders are also interested in a company's non-financial performance, such as their environmental impact, their governance practices, and their social outcomes. So guys, let's look at a couple of examples of social performance indicators. And when we are looking at social performance, this is anything to do with people. So you look at things like the number of employees that the company has, the number of staff resignations, the number of strikes, their BEE score, the number of employee injuries, the amount that the company spends on training their employees, and also the amount spent on corporate social investments. Those are examples of social performance indicators. For environmental performance indicators, a couple of examples include the volume of electricity used, the volume of water used, carbon dioxide emissions, the volume of waste recycled, and also the volume of hazardous waste produced. Then when it comes to governance, please remember governance is covered in the auditing syllabus. So you cover the King 4 code in the auditing syllabus. So please remember guys to always take all of your books into your management accounting papers just in case they examine governance in the management accounting paper. Then the balance scorecard is a tool that companies can use to make sure that they don't only focus on financial performance measures, but they also include non-financial performance measures. So the balance scorecard combines financial and non-financial performance measures. And it's split into four areas. And you guys can just read through those four points over there. So how should you approach a question where you need to analyze and interpret non-financial information? This is the framework that I want you to apply. And it's very similar to the framework that we went through with the analysis and interpretation of financial information. The only difference is, up front, you need to calculate a movement. So for example, if you need to analyze the movement in electricity used. You are going to take the current year electricity used, deduct the prior year, and divide by the prior year, because that's always how we calculate a movement. So first you calculate the movement. Then once you have the movement, you compare it to a benchmark. So compare it to prior periods or compare it to similar companies. And at this stage, you guys should already be comfortable with the fact that you must always use the correct terminology when benchmarking. So you don't say increased or decreased. You need to indicate whether the movement is positive or negative. So you should be using words such as improved, deteriorated, better, worse, positive, negative, etc. Then after benchmarking, you can provide possible reasons. But please remember, don't force this framework only provide a reason if there is a good reason for the movement. And then finally, where performance is negative, you can discuss the likely impact or remedial action. However, once again, guys, you should only discuss the likely impact or remedial action if you can add extra value through this discussion. If you can't add extra value, leave it out. Don't waste time writing down rubbish. You won't score any marks. Then, in addition to benchmarking to prior periods or similar companies, you can also benchmark to the movement in production volumes or the movement in revenue. Obviously, only where it makes sense to do so. So, for example, guys, if production volumes or if revenue increases significantly from one period to another, I would expect that the company would have to use more electricity because they are producing more. 
I would expect that they would have to use more water. So that's why sometimes it makes sense to benchmark any movements that you've calculated to the movements in production volumes or revenue. But please only do this where it makes sense. Don't do it if it doesn't make sense. So for example, you can't benchmark a company's BEE score to the movements in production volumes or the movements in revenue. That doesn't make any sense. All right, let's go and have a look at the lecture example. The following information relates to Vickery Limited. So you've been given information for 20x3 and for 20x2. We've got the training spend, so the amount spent on training, the number of staff injuries, electricity consumption, and greenhouse gas emissions. You are told that production volumes increased by 18% from the prior year. During the 20x3 financial year, Vickery Limited acquired a new e-learning platform to facilitate staff training. And they also replaced all light bulbs with energy efficient LED globes. Then in the required, you need to analyze and interpret. So remember, analyze means calculate and interpret means comment on your calculations. So analyze and interpret the social and environmental performance of Vickery Limited for the 20x3 financial year. So guys, if you look at the information that's been provided, we have the training spend, so that's going to indicate social performance. It affects people, the amount that they spend on training their employees. The number of staff injuries is also social. The electricity consumption will be environmental. And greenhouse gas emissions is also environmental. So let's look at each of these separately. First, we are going to analyze and interpret their social performance. So first, let's look at the training spent. So based on the framework that I provided you with, you are going to calculate a movement from the prior year to the current year. So calculate the movement. The amount spent on training increased by 13.64% from the prior year. So this is obviously positive because the company is spending more money training their employees. So the amount spent on training has increased by 13.64% from the prior year, indicating positive performance. So we've benchmarked to the prior year. We can't benchmark to similar companies or industry averages because that information is not available. However, please note, you should compare the entity's performance to industry averages or similar companies where this information is available. So in addition to benchmarking to the prior period, you should also compare to industry averages or similar companies if possible. Then we can discuss a potential reason. If you go back to the information provided in the question, we were told that they acquired a new e-learning platform to facilitate staff training during the 20x3 financial year. So that is probably the reason for the increase in training spend from the prior year to the current year. So this is due to the acquisition of the new e-learning platform to facilitate staff training. Then next, we are going to calculate the movements in the number of staff injuries from the prior year to the current year. And this is decreased by 17.65%. So obviously, if the number of staff injuries is decreasing, that indicates positive performance. And especially because production volumes are increasing, guys, we know that production volumes increased by 18% from the prior year. So the company is producing more units in the current year. And even though they are producing more units in the current year, they still managed to reduce the number of staff injuries. So that obviously indicates positive performance. So despite the increase in production volumes, the number of staff injuries decreased 
by 17.65% from the prior year, indicating positive performance. Then we were not given a reason for this movement in the question. However, if the number of staff injuries is decreasing, that would indicate improved safety standards in the current financial year. Or alternatively, this might be as a result of better training of employees. Then next, we are going to look at environmental performance. So first... Let's calculate the movement in electricity consumed from the prior year to the current year. And we can see that the amount of electricity used decreased by 5%. And this is despite production volumes increasing by 18%. So even though they are producing more, they've managed to use less electricity, which obviously indicates positive performance. So despite the increase in production volumes, electricity usage has decreased, indicating positive performance. What is a potential reason for this? Go back to the information provided in the question. We were told that they replaced all light bulbs with energy efficient LED globes. So that will obviously result in them saving electricity in the current year. So this is because all light bulbs were replaced with energy-efficient LED globes. Then last, we need to calculate the movement in greenhouse gas emissions from the prior year to the current year. Greenhouse gas emissions increased by 26.32% from the prior year to the current year. Now, once again, guys, benchmark this to the movement in production volumes. If the company produces more, I would expect them to have more greenhouse gas emissions. However, it is concerning that the movement in greenhouse gas emissions is more than the movement in production volumes. So greenhouse gas emissions are increasing at a faster rate than production volumes. Greenhouse gas emissions are increasing at 26.32% and production volumes are only increasing at 18%. So this indicates negative performance. I would expect this to increase in line with the increase in production volumes, but it shouldn't increase by more than the increase in production volumes. Now, we don't have a reason given in the question. However, this is concerning, so they should investigate reasons for this and strive to improve. All right, guys, so this is actually a really easy section. You should hope that you get the analysis and interpretation of non-financial information in one of your papers because there isn't really anything to study. You don't have to study any ratios. All you do is you calculate movements in everything you've been given, you discuss those movements, so you say whether they've improved or deteriorated, you give potential reasons, and if possible, you discuss remedial action or the impact. But don't discuss for the sake of discussing, only do that if you can add value by discussing further. Alright, that then brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you guys.